Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Marshall here, and I'm bringing you another one versus one cast for Age of Empires 4. Now, again, this is only my second cast. It may still be clunky. I am learning. But here we have a one versus one between Vicious Plum in Vicious Red as the Vicious French, the Ferocious Franks. Meanwhile, over on the other time, on the other s the team, shall I say, <laughs> that's uh, gone well, hasn't it? We've got Fee Age as the English. And we're playing on Liberty, I believe. If we look at the minimap and just around the map in general, obviously I can't zoom out. But we've got a few points of note. We've got the sacred sites, which if you capture both of them, then you have to hold them for 10 minutes to win. Or you kill all the landmarks or build a wonder. Those are your victory conditions. And here we see Fee Age going for eight villes straight into the into the sheep there. And there's the English going into the houses because of course your first pop limit is 10 and then going straight for some gold. Nice work there so far. Over on the red side though, Vicious Plum also doing the same. Eight vills on food, then the next couple onto gold. So we got 8-0-3 so far after the house. Seems to be the go-to strat and we've got a little bit of scouting as well let's have a little bit of uh, nose as to what our players can see vicious plum got a good bit of scouting around his tc i'm going around getting these sheep of course the sheep follow your scout in this game you don't have to worry about them getting home unstolen and you've got these uh, nice sneaky forestry areas as well have a look over at fee age though slightly less of the map explored Still going around, doing what he can, getting a few sheep there as possible. So what's next for these players? Well, the Franks are very much uh, an aggressive cavalry civilization. They'll go into uh, some Frankish knights in the Feudal Age. Of course, both players have to get to the Feudal Age first, and that is with 400 food and 200 gold, and you get your landmarks straight away there. Going for Fee Age, we've got four on Lumber now, possibly for some houses. But again, we've got 400 food and 180, 190 gold, so almost ready to go straight up into Feudal in both of these players' instances. Of course, the English have the Long Bowman in the, uh, in the Feudal Age. And here we have the Frank... Frank's going for the School of Cavalry, which gets a couple of additional bonuses for cavalry going forwards and also doubles as a stable. You can see the descriptions there. Unit production cost vastly reduced. That's, uh, <laughs> and the 25% research reduction. That's, that's pretty, uh, pretty impressive. Not going to lie. Having a look over at the English, though, seems like the council mall, uh, council hall is the favoured one for the English. You get a choice of two landmarks, by the way, if you're new to the game. Two landmarks to go up to, well, each age, really, um, which gives you a choice of different things. Council hall gives you additional long bowman speed production in terms of um, how fast it produces long bowman, and it doubles as an archery range in that it can produce long bowman. Which is gorgeous as a bonus. And the English long bowman rush is a thing that you have to watch out for. Fisher's Plum, though, finally scouting the base there, sees the landmark, and wonders ah, I've got to prepare for the long bowman. So I've got to get some heavy units out, deal with that. We're already getting some walls up as well for Fee Age. Bit of harassment of that villager there with the scout. Just got to be careful. Being a nuisance. Absolute nuisance. Of course, you get too close to the TC and you start getting hailed with arrows. And this game, duking arrows, is not possible. You cannot do it. And straight away, we've already got uh, VH coming back to try and help his uh, help his guys out. Scout coming through. Vicious Plum up to the feudal now. We'll probably start producing 
some uh, some knights straight away. There we go, royal knights straight away. Of course, they're not cheap, these guys. Royal knights, uh, there we go. 140 food and 100 gold each. So he's going to want more food production. He's got 12 on there at the moment, but he's going to want a bit more. And then, of course, if he's really going to go heavy into uh, royal knights, he's going to want a few more miners as well. Possibly reduce, uh, research the specialized pick as soon as pos. But there we go. We've got two sets of... Uh, Mining camps there, of course. That is stone. So possibly going for some forward uh, castles. And they're not too distant. Yes, gotta watch out for them villagers. Look at this. An early TC for the English. But blocking it. It blocked. Oh, slowed down that TC production. Of course, if your unit's in there, you can't start building it. Unbelievable. Good number of vills there doing that, those six vills to produce that additional, but we've got a royal knight coming in here to kill off some vills! This TC, Vicious Plum does not want to go up, and look at how little damage that royal knight is taking from the scout. It's a heavy uh, cavalry unit. He's already lost two villagers, has uh, fee age now. The garrison a couple more into there, and we'll possibly bring out some, some longbows, but of course... Longbows aren't amazing against heavy cavalry. Which is what you've got to watch out for. So this royal knight, this singular royal knight, has done a lot of work. That second TC for that wood line and for the, the wood production of the, the huntable deer has been a pretty, pretty big win for this game so far. And at the same time, building his own uh, second TC is uh, Vicious Plump. Towards the hills there. Again, at the wood line and the deer line. Seems to be the favoured spot for a second TC once you get up into the feudal age. A little bit housed there. Not too much to worry about. And that's why the early stone production was a thing. Getting that stone allows the TC. TCs, I believe, cost about 200 stone? 300 stone? I forget exactly. We'll find out. But we got some shenanigans going on. These royal knights are still being an absolute nuisance. Morville's having to come off food. This TC does not want to be a thing for Vicious Plum, of course. Denying it for this long is a major, major win. We might even see a GG conceding. Because if we look at the scores, we're 400 ahead for Vicious Plum, which is an aggregation of all the different areas, military, society, economic, all of that jazz, which in, uh, encompasses things like resource uh, gather rate, number of villagers, amount of military, kills, uh, technologies researched, but these four royal knights, I mean, this, uh, this English player really wants to get out some, uh, possibly either some spearmen or men-at-arms, and we've got some spearmen there chasing off these royal knights, but Possibly a little too little too late because that uh, TC there being denied quite as heavily as it has been is is nasty, 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 nasty. We've got a pesky little wolf here doing what he can for Fee Age. Of course, Fee Age is not controlling this, but a good thing for Fee Age, of course. Just that little nuisance. But back come the spears again. We need a bit more micro on those to prevent those knights from getting in. He ended up chasing around a little bit. Was the wall denied? The wall is uh, successful in this area. A little bit further as well, but... Um, gone for a, quite a wide wall. We haven't got any gold gathering for Fee Age. And only 153 in the stockpile, so not a lot of longbowmen can come out anyway. Hence the reliance on spearmen. Finally have our TC up next to the wood line and the deer. Now that's big because, of course, deer give you a, a gathering bonus for food. You gather food from deer faster than you do from sheep or berries. So deer are a crucial resource in Age of Empires 4. Vicious Plum now thinking, actually, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a break. But not too much of a break because I'm just getting more dudes. 
More of my Royal Knights. We haven't even started on uh, Age 3 yet, the Castle Age. Just happily, as Larry, going for the Royal Knights and Chivalry being researched as well. Regeneration on those Royal Knights. Absolutely nasty. And even transition into Archers there to deal with the Spearmen. So the Royal Knights will, uh, will kite the Spearmen into the Archers. The Archers will wreck the Spearmen and then the Royal Knights will get an absolute feast. Here they go, going to come in and kill off this vill, stopping this wall. Again, more denial from Vicious Plum. Lethal stuff here. Attacking enemy landmark. Not much of an issue there. But again, the spearmen show their faces, and away go the Royal Knights. Hit and run, an absolute nuisance. We've got some archers coming out now. And they will assist. And we're just delaying the Castle Age here because Vicious Plum doesn't need to worry about it. It's not like uh, Fee Age is going to get up to it in any particular easy rate here. Having had a TC denied for quite so long. And again. Just denying those walls, and there we go, anticipating the uh, the spears chasing the royal knights, but the archers a little bit too close for comfort there, and there's the GG from Fee Age. Sees the transition to the archers and realises it is all over. Absolutely gorgeous. Brutal, but absolutely gorgeous. Well played. Well, well played. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that game. As always, don't forget to like, uh, comment, and uh, share and all that jazz. Engaging with the video really helps me out. Thank you very much indeed if you do so. And, of course, share with any of your friends who are either interested in Age of Empires 4 or playing it. I'm always looking for good games to cast and a community to engage with. So, there's that. And until next time, folks, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please leave any feedback in the comment section below. And as always, have a good one.